The 6-inch Kirby Log Cabin Trim Tool by Jean Ann Wright is a smaller version of the popular 8-inch Kirby Log Cabin. Everyone wanted a smaller size because when you combine four of these to get a curvy effect, like in this block, it is 12 inches. The original was a, uh, an 8-inch block, so when you combined four of them to get this curvy uh, effect or the effect of a circle, then it ended up being 16 inches. So the smaller version gives you a lot more potential for table runners, placemats, and things like that. The technique is exactly the same. Uh, it's just as much fun, and the smaller logs that are required to get the effect are not any harder to do in the smaller version than they are in the original. The ruler has all of the markings you need to be successful in this. There is a seam guide in the corner that has holes drilled right here for the center square. So you lay that over the center square, and if you notice, this is a scant quarter inch so that you are going to be uh, successful in sewing a perfect seam allowance here. Once you have that perfect seam allowance here, that square is the same size all the way down the tool, and you'll be able to trim everything perfectly. There's a quarter inch seam allowance marked around the entire outside edge. There are dash lines and solid lines that will match up with seam lines as you go so you can keep your block square. And this is my favorite part right here. We have cut the narrow strips at least one and a quarter inch wide, cut the wide strips at least one and three quarter inches wide. So once you make one of these blocks, the tutorial on the ruler is all you'll need to be successful whenever you go to use this ruler. There are two different sets of squares on here. If you notice, the white one is the center square. When the block is complete, that is where the center square of the finished log cabin will be. And then this is marked narrow round one and narrow round two. These are wide round one and wide round two. So when I am trimming the narrow logs of the block, I will use these. When I am trimming the wide, I use these two blocks. You get the curved effect by adding narrow to two adjoining sides and wides to the other two adjoining sides. So now I'm going to show you how this works. Here is my center square, and it tells you on the ruler right here to cut the center square one and a half inches. Now that is a little larger than you need, and so when I lay it here, mark with a water-soluble marker or a friction pen through the holes, I am going to sew between those dots to make sure my seam allowance is absolutely accurate. So now on this one, I have added the two wide strips, then the two narrow to the center square. And if you notice on the back, see how my seams are lined up with the blue dots so you can see that everything matched exactly. And at this point, you'll also note that the block looks a little wonky because these are not all the same um, length or anything. It doesn't matter. I just use scraps and cut them off. That's the beauty of the tool because by trimming everything around the center square, this is all going to end up being the exact size it needs to be. Now, on when you're using a curvy log cabin trim tool, I'm going to use this wide round one to square up the two wide logs that I've added. And if you notice, because I followed that seam allowance, this square fits exactly over that. The solid lines are matching up with the seam lines. Now I could take my rotor cutter and trim two sides. And then I'm going to rotate the block and rotate the ruler so the narrow square is showing right here. These are lined up with the sides. Trim two more sides and I'm going to end up with a perfect log cabin. Here are the wide, here are the narrow around the center square. By trimming each round as you go, you end up with perfect results and because you're adjusting every step along the way instead of waiting to the end. And if you wait till the end, any of those discrepancies in the size of the logs are uh, going to be magnified as you add each round and then your block is not going to be perfect when you're done. So here is the second round. I've added two darks, then two lights. These are the wide, these are the narrow. And so I'm going to trim the wide first. I recommend when you're doing this, 
that I stack all of the log cabins I'm doing. I trim all of the wide sides, rotate the ruler and the blocks, and then trim all of the narrow sides. And if you notice, once again, here is wide round two, and see how that fits perfectly in there? And these dash lines are matching perfectly with the seam lines. I'll trim these two sides, rotate the block and the ruler, place the narrow round two over that square, and I check to make sure that everything's lining up on the outside, trim those two sides, and once again, look, I have a perfect log cabin. I'm going to repeat the process, adding two wide strips and two narrow strips, but this time, all I have to do is put the center square over the center right here and line everything up, and I can pull this out a little bit to make sure that my seams are lining up, and that's just a little bit of distortion that happened when I was pressing. Trim around the entire outside edge, and there is my finished block. If you notice, you're getting a curved effect because the wides are sewn on adjoining sides of the center square and the narrows are sewn on the other two sides. So when I put four of those together, I get movement and a circular motion in my quilt. Now I can use this in place of any traditional log cabin block. We have, here is the eight inch curvy log cabin. And you can see the difference in size with the six inch, but also make sure your customers realize that there are two different sizes, and that is a substantial difference in size if you look at this, two inches on two adjoining sides. We also, however, have the original log cabin trim tool, which makes traditional log cabins. And if you notice, these are the exact same size because I can mix curvy and traditional log cabins in the same project. We also have the six inch log cabin trim tool, which is a traditional log cabin that is included in the long log cabin trim tool too, which does six and 12 inch log cabins. And if you notice, once again, these are the exact same size. So I can mix and match these in my quilts to give me a, a multitude of different options. And as always, Creative Grids has a lot of companions for their projects or for their rulers. Here are several uh, cut loose press patterns that are available. And for instance, in ice cream cones, you can see that the curve of the top makes it look like the ice cream and doing the um, darks on the bottom makes it look like the cone. This one, Fly Away With Me, makes it look like birds in flight because you can see the white birds here and the way that the curves accent those gives it a totally different look. Here is a table runner which has the circles on it and it gives a very modern look to a traditional block. Rainbow Swirls has these curves in here that makes it look like a very sophisticated pinwheel, but once again, you're just doing a very simple curvy log cabin that you can make in a matter of minutes. And here's Wiggly Worms that you can see by placing the finished blocks in a variety of patterns, you can get this rotation going up the quilt that adds movement to anything. So these are just a few ideas and what you can do with this ruler and there are tons of options as well as including it in any traditional log cabin pattern that you have already fallen in love with and have seen in other books.